in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed second corinthians chapter 26 let's read from verse 3 to 5 second corinthians 26 second chronicles my apologies 26 second chronicles 26 verse 3 to 5 second chronicles not corinthians chronicles 26 thank you the bible says 16 years old was uzziah when he began to reign and he reigned 50 and two years in jerusalem his mother's name was jecoliah of jerusalem verse 4. the bible says and he did that which was right in the sight of the lord according to all that his father amaziah did verse 5. i like us to read together ready one to read and he sought god in the days of zechariah who had understanding in the visions of god and as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Let's repeat that last verse. That's last part again. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Settle it once and for all, ladies and gentlemen, that there is infinite value in the pursuit of God and spiritual things. That at no point in your Christian experience or your destiny pursuit should you have a reason to drop God aside. It is better for your job to be dropped aside. It is better for your ambition to be dropped aside than for you to drop God and his purposes. We, we live in a world that seems to believe that the more civilized you are, the less spiritual you should be. That is not the case in scripture. Thou shalt love the Lord your God, he says, with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. For as long as Uzziah sought the Lord, the Bible says God made him. Look at me. Have you seen anything that God made? Do you know how powerful anything God makes becomes? Look at the heavens and the earth. The sun has never required assistance to shine. It is older than all of us and yet there is no weariness because God made it. The earth has never been tired of giving. Every year we plant and it produces without fail. What you call famine is demonic manipulation upon the earth but as far as the earth is concerned it was mandated to produce so when the bible says god made him think before you say amen investigate on the other things that god made when god makes a thing there is no depletion because everything reflects the power of the one who made it as long as he sought the lord even as a businessman God made him to prosper. As long as he sought the Lord as a preacher, God made him to prosper. The first principle I want you to learn this morning is the value of your spiritual connection. In James chapter 2 and verse 26, James 2 and verse 26, James was teaching on faith and works and he now borrowed a very powerful concept to educate the believers. He says, for as the body, is that in your Bible? Without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. The A part is my interest. That means everybody lives only to the degree to which there is a spirit that causes it to live. The body there is not just talking of a human body. Your business is a body. Where is the spirit that powers it? Your project is a body. Where is the spirit that powers it? That means every physical thing you see only lives, it derives its life from the realm of the spirit. Please understand this. 
no matter how intelligent no matter how dexterous you are in understanding if there is no spiritual backing and connection there is no future for whatever you are doing now unbelievers understand this in spite of all their technical skills they would do all of that in the day but in the night they know that the basis for their prosperity is their connection to the realm of the spirit whether it is demonic they know they have to outsource an advantage beyond this realm to dominate in this realm are we together the value of your spiritual connection that extends to your prayer life, that extends to your word study life, that extends to your passion for the things of God, that extends to your appetite for the house of God. The moment your growth becomes the basis for your cutting away from God and his purposes, he will rather limit your growth to preserve your spiritual health. I hope you know the anointing was only designed to fight what did not come from God. If it is God limiting you, no prayer and no anointing can fight it. The anointing does not fight God. It only fights what is antichrist. So before you start praying, verify who is resisting you. Because God also resists men. Your spiritual connection. Men, our audacity in this kingdom. Men are audacious and strong they are able to confront life with confidence not because of anything that they have Paul clearly said it that our sufficiency the ability to always rise to the occasion never disappointing that's what we call sufficiency he says our sufficiency is of God who has made us able ministers I like um, Philippians 4 and verse 13 he says I can do all things what an arrogant statement if he stopped there we will have a right to vet him who do you think you are to claim you can do all things you know how many things there are to be done in a man's lifetime and here is an apostle standing with audacity and saying I can do all things including that business project I can do all things including spreading my business globally I can do all things but he never stops there he says through Christ through Christ the anointing that is derived from my relationship you look at your church and you look at this ministry you are smart and intelligent to know that there are certain results that men unassisted by God cannot produce John chapter 3 1 and 2 Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night and he says rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God he says for no man can do these things these miracles which thou doest except God be with him there are certain results that are beyond the realm of intellect there are certain results that are beyond the realm of men there is a dimension of result that when you produce it implicates you immediately it shows that there must be a spirit assisting you whether it is demonic or divine for sure you could not have produced that result on your own and by yourself david how would you stand before goliath and there this beast of a philistine a man who threatened the army in israel can you imagine david standing as a young teenager no track record of being trained in the army and he stands before saul and says give me a chance i can bring this man down now he stands before goliath and goliath said am i a dog i will kill you but respect me israel is this the best you can bring and David looked at him and said, are you done talking? Let me even tell you how you will die. I will first use this sling to bring you down. Then with your own sword, I will take off your head. He says, you come to me with your bows and your spheres. But there is a covenant. I'm, I'm not coming. I would be stupid to stand before you with a sling. Can I tell you? Every time you stand before situations and circumstances, life will ask you, who sent you? what is the basis politically you know there's what we call godfatherism and so on and so forth when you stand to advocate some kind of favor they will ask you who sent you you are in this office by whose recommendation did you enter here if you say no one they say follow that same door and get out of this place in fact there are certain jobs you will never get no matter how professional you are until you are able to bring a recommendation and a referral by certain people 
are we together who have a relationship with that organization so men are wise enough to know that there are certain results you cannot get by yourself ladies and gentlemen for many of you who have been trying to pursue certain results and just following an intellectual path alone you see there are many routes that propose an excelling life but the bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man it says the end thereof are the ways of death first principle god first in this business god first you build that house before you call people to come and jump up and down. Lord, I hand over everything to you. In the beginning, God. Beginning of my life, God. Beginning of my business, God. Beginning of my journey, So as I'm teaching right now, you need to start rearranging the cadres of the things in your mind. Don't say God is in my life as number what? His, his passion is not just to be in your life, it's to be first. God can be scattered somewhere in your life. Money being number one, maybe. Your ambition being number two. And then you smuggle God somewhere as number seven or ten. And be asking, God, are you watching things? No, 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 no. If he is not alpha, he cannot be omega. He must be beginning. Are we together now? Yes. So this is my first charge. It's an irrefutable principle for an excelling life. Show me a man who has failed by every definition except for his connection with God. I show you a man who is about to emerge and to evolve like an insect evolves from egg lava pupa adult. He says, rejoice not over me, my enemies, though I fall. The one thing Job had left, every other thing left him. Business connections left, sons and daughters left. In one day, no man on earth, as I know, has experienced this kind of tragedy. But the one thing he had left, the wife even said, curse God and die. She was not wicked, she was just frustrated. There's nothing else. When will you start building your life again? When will I start having children again? And Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him that all the days of my appointed time, I will wait. I will wait. I will wait. Don't call a God lover a failure. Never call him. You will bury your head in shame for the rest of your life. For the Bible says, listen very carefully. The Bible says with God, all things with God with God in partnership with God the Bible and history is full of ordinary men forgotten and concluded justifiably so by life and by society but their relationship with God like you throw a seed to the ground and you leave it for a long time there is silence and then you begin to see an emergence until that seed becomes i'm speaking to someone it looks like there is nothing else working in your life except your relationship with god and you're already feeling frustrated men are even saying you've not translated your spirituality to an excelling life let me give you a word of hope that one anchor you have is the greatest thing you have held on to and in the name of jesus may your manifestation appear in this season your manifestation becomes visible the bible says listen carefully the bible says that the word became flesh the word became flesh and it appeared unto men and we beheld his glory even as the glory of the begotten full of grace and truth the word was made became flesh nothing and no one in your life should sustain the ability to take the place of god and this has nothing to do with being a preacher please listen this has nothing to do with religious fanatism it is an orientation you must have for the rest of your life we live in a world where the higher we rise the more embarrassed we are to propose our spirituality so your phone rings and it's a christian song you off it quickly because you are in the midst of people who you don't want to show like you are fanatical you want to show that you are an intelligent person not so not so not so you never shy away from what works 
the moment you start getting embarrassed at God is an orientation you have that you suspect he will always disappoint you. So you rather not bring in that issue. I believe in God. I believe he is a maker. Not just the maker of the heavens and the earth, the maker of men. When God makes you, you will last. When, God, when men make you on their own, men are vehicles, not the source. Men become your source, they will ruin your life. Are we together? Yes. They will say become king over us today and tomorrow they will say crucify him. But there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. If you're following so far, say amen. amen. Very quickly, principle number two. The second principle that governs an extraordinary life governs acceleration in this kingdom is called vision vision in addition to your spiritual connection the second key is vision proverbs 29 and verse 18 proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18 the bible says where there is no vision the people perish where there is no vision the people perish but he that keepeth the law happy is he one of the versions will say where there is no vision the people cast off restraint this is very very important in jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 11 so a discussion is between god and this young boy who would later become a mighty prophet ordained to be a prophet called jeremiah jeremiah chapter 1 the full text is from verse 5, but for sake of time, let's look at verse 11. So he meets this young boy and tells him that while you were in your mother's womb, you have been called and ordained to be a prophet unto the nations. And Jeremiah is afraid and he says, ah, um, I, mean, I mean, but I am a child. He says, say not that I am a child, but wherever I send you to, you shall go. And whoever instructs you to speak to, you shall speak. When we get to verse 11, he says, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? preparing him for a great life he began to talk about his perception what do you see in light of all that i have told you and he said the rod of an almond tree verse 12 he says you have seen well other versions will say you have seen correctly it says for i will hasten my word that you have seen to perform it amplified says for i am alert and active watching over my word to perform it vision is the ability to see things as they should be not as they are the ability the faculty of perception the ability to be able to see things from the lens of of god's standpoint beyond the limitations that you see now great people and those who make advancement in life are people who have vision so you can look at this beautiful auditorium and this entire estate you can look at it it's incredible art and architecture among many other fields but art and architecture are two fields that reveal the creativity of the kingdom in a very profound way that an artist would sit down and from the lens of his imagination he would begin to create and transport realities give frame and pictures and write it down do you know how much artworks sell across the globe? You would not imagine millions of dollars for some of them. That was the brainchild of someone's creativity. How about an architect? Whilst you're giving him your brief, he's looking at you and it looks like he's not understanding you until he goes to the paper and he comes up with something so beautiful. Sometimes you are tempted to ask, where did you get this from? This is the power of imagery, imagination. Listen, there is no leader who will thrive in this end time if you do not have the ability to perceive. And that perception is not just about things. It is also about people. You must be able to look at Saul and see Paul. Please help those under the anointing. Are we together now? This is very important. If you do not have the faculty, let me have your attention, please. If you do not have the faculty of perception, you will never be able to rise in life. Look up, please. You see, the way God speaks to men, when God speaks to you, he never speaks to you like he's speaking to a man. 
he speaks like he's speaking to himself you know it is God that spoke to you because that version of you cannot do what he's telling you to do anything you hear that you have the ability to do at that moment most likely it is your mind when God speaks he speaks to a version of you that is about to come that is the version that can make this happen he speaks like he's speaking to himself why do you see Gideon a man who is hiding and you never call him oh fearful Gideon you call him a mighty man of valor and Gideon is saying don't flatter me I'm here hiding trying to preserve my life and when he was done with Gideon and changed his perception he said go in this thy might say vision one more time say vision yes until you see yourself beyond the house you are staying you will never go out you see vision listen vision works together with imagination Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 says now unto him which is able who is able to do exceeding abundantly far above all that we ask or think some expression say imagine your imagination is a necessary tool for your advancement as far as your eyes can see it says i have given unto you listen when abraham and lot remember the story of abraham and lot you find it in genesis 12 the blessing comes upon abraham and lot goes with him by the time we get to chapter 13 both of them had become so prosperous and then there was a contention among their people and abraham said we be brethren let there be no strife lot choose among yourself and the bible says the man went near sodom and whilst Abraham was standing there, the Lord made a very instructive statement. He said, Abraham, from where thou art, lift up your eyes. Your legs cannot go there, but your eyes can go up. Listen, everybody on earth can look at the sky. I may not be able to reach the air, maybe to get an airplane that takes me there. But from where I am, once I lift up my eyes, I can see what anybody else is seeing from where thou art lift up thy eyes from where you are not just the location from that financial state lift up your eyes from that educational state lift up your eyes because your life will go in the direction of your eyes you know that your life does not just go in the direction of your heart it is the direction of your eyes if your eyes are looking left chances are excellent that your body will go left are we together yes that is the reason why we have our eyes in front so that there is no possibility of disrespecting your eyes if you have to turn left if your eyes is going right your body will go right if you find somebody looking straight and going backward indefinitely you will know that that person most likely has a medical situation or whatever because it's not given to men your body moves in the direction of your eyes the organization moves in the direction of vision. There is no organization that rises higher than the vision and the perception of its leader. It will rise to match your vision and stay there. Are we together? When Jesus walked upon the earth, he had a global vision. Can you imagine? That frail, supposedly frail Nazarene, his vision was not to come and become a celebrity. That was too small a vision. His vision was not to recruit 12 men, not even 120, not even 30. His vision was to permeate the entire earth, to literally be the basis of man's reconciling with God. And as frail as his steps were, that vision would never fail. Look at the world today, grateful and thankful because of his death vision is powerful from where you are apostle but i'm in a place in lagos that i do not even want to call the name congratulations right there where you are you can lift up your eyes imagination does not you don't have to pay for it vision is powerful you need many believers claim scripture but they do not have the discipline to have a clearly defined vision for their lives and for their organizations can I tell you something God told me a few years ago? Disorganization always translates to depletion. Every time there is disorganization, there will always be depletion. You try to arrange clothes in a bag, 
don't fold them just try to stuff them in you would find out that the bag may not be able to close get the same clothes iron them fix everything and arrange them the bag will close and there will even be extra space someone say vision can you give me a blueprint of your vision spiritually speaking and then in every other aspect of your life where do you want to go from here nobody starts driving on the road speed is useless until there is vision imagine a man speeding and you say to where and you say i do not know i always like to give an example imagine with me that you got a uh, well now we have the whole gps system but imagine with me that you just got a cab with no sense of direction and you tell the man i'm coming to um elevation church and he says oh let's go and then he starts driving around around and then you say are you sure you know the place and he now says well i i'm not i thought i i am not sure and you say so why were you running like this you were honing and running every time there is no vision you must slow down you see if you are trying to get a place and you don't exactly know where that place is the first thing that is affected is your speed you have to slow down until vision is clear are we together vision go back and have a vision for your life a vision for your organization a very clear description psychologists and even those in the personal development industry would tell us that the clearer your vision is the greater it is your sense of achievement you will be able to achieve it when the vision is clear I want to make it that is a very consoling statement but that is not a vision are we together yes I want to make it or I must make it my life must be great wonderful confession but in the realm of greatness that statement is empty what is make it to you what is rise to you you have to give your life definition 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 apostle i've been suffering in this lagos it looks like things are not working okay what do you want to work at what point will you know it has worked are we together all i know is my life must change based on what indices how do you know your life is changing how do you measure your progress without vision if you're with me say amen One of the ways that you become a visionary person is by leveraging on a visionary association. I've always said that if there are, respectfully speaking, if there are five foolish people around you, you did not count well. There are six. <laughs> and if there are five wise people around you, you did not count well. There are six. Because you will always be a reflection of the people and the company that you keep around you most of us are unable to be visionary because there are people in our lives who do not inspire us even in our most unproductive state we are still the best in that group that is a dangerous group to be in. the bible says to provoke one another unto godliness that someone can leave this church and say lord if you can use my pastor in spite of all his story and everything he's given you've raised him now and i'm i'm being blessed by his life I, i'm inspired i will go back and i will deal with this thing with all my heart what is making me financially bankrupt why is it that favor does not come my way why is it that i'm not able to build anything the bible says he's able to do that which we pray for and that which we imagine one last time say vision vision is very powerful because it gives you the legitimacy to say no to many things there are many you will offend many people if your no does not have a basis vision prunes your relationships vision defines your relationships vision gives you focus so that you are busy but you are not busy doing too many things in fact great people are known to be busy people but the things that they do are not more than five or six do you know the the things the factors that actually make for your success are not many when you find yourself doing too many things is proof that you are failing 
you should be busy about a few things that really matter. In the case of Mary and Martha, he says, Mary, you are worried, Martha, Martha, you are worried and obsessed about many things. He says, but one thing is needful. There are a few essentials that when you lay your hand upon, you will command victory, you will command acceleration in an unusual way. May that be your testimony. Yeah. Key number three, are we learning? Yeah. Let's see how fast we can go this morning. So the first is your spiritual connection. Second is vision. Number three, the third key that controls the advancement of men is light. L-I-G-H-T, light. The power of knowledge, illumination. Knowledge and understanding. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 15 says, the labor of the fool wearied every one of them. Ecclesiastes 10, 15. It says, because, this is the reason. Every time you see weariness, every time you see exhaustion without progress, the Bible is giving you the reason here. The labor of the foolish, the foolish there not being an insult, is a description of a state. It says, it wearied every one of them because he knoweth not how to go into the city. Not because the city is not there. He does not know how to go into the city. Someone say light. Please shout it, say light. The miracle of understanding is a real miracle. When God wants to help a man and help a man's destiny, he quickens your understanding, your ability to comprehend the ways of God, to comprehend the laws that guarantee for success. Show me a man who submits himself to light, to knowledge and understanding. I show you a man who is building an enviable destiny without fail. Understanding is such a requirement for destiny actualization. The Bible says, then open he their understanding that they might understand the scripture. That was the prayer of Paul for the church in Ephesus. You find that in Ephesians chapter 1, when you read from verse 15 down to 20, he was crying and praying that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ would grant them access to light. He says that you being enlightened, Amplified says the eyes of your understanding, being flooded with light that you may know. Ignorance is dangerous. Ignorance is dangerous. Ignorance is dangerous. If I fall from off this stage, even in ignorance, I will still pay for it. Gravity does not respect the fact that I am ignorant. It will take a miracle to not fall here and hurt myself because there is a law that is at work. Whether I understand the law or not is not the issue. Are we together now? Yes. Sincerity of heart will never substitute for knowledge. There are many sincere people who believe that because their hearts are pure and without guile, they should succeed. And you find a lot of people say, I am innocent, but God, what is the meaning of this? I'm a nice person. I'm not wicked at heart. It takes knowledge, light. And you see, when we deal with the subject of knowledge, please let me have your attention. When we deal with the subject of knowledge, you do not, there is a standard for, of knowledge that you must attain for every result you want to command. So your knowledge is not freelanced. Your knowledge is not arbitrarily. Are we together now? Your knowledge must be methodical. It must be to the degree that will earn you that result. There are many people who are not in complete ignorance, but they do not know enough to produce the result. First, Corinthians 8 2. First Corinthians 8 2. I like us to read together. One to read. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. I would always give the example of the grading system that we have in our educational institutions. We have A, B, C, D, E, F. I think it stops at F. Are we together? F does not mean zero. F means anything less than 40. Am I right on that? So if you get zero, for instance, God forbid, say amen. Say it again. If you get zero or 12 
or 17, even 35, maybe 38. What is the grade? Now, if I arrange all those who got F according to their scores, someone will still be first. Yet, based on the grading system, both the person who did not write the exam, the person who started and slept off, the person who did not read, the person who honestly did his best and did not get the cut off point, all of them will be in the same category. Can I tell you, little knowledge is dangerous because it makes you believe you are not ignorant, yet you still not have results. You will be in the midst of great people. I know, I know, but your result will eventually drag you to the place of losers. So you need high level knowledge high level knowledge not just spiritual knowledge but the understanding of the cosmos the laws that make for an excelling life knowledge 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 you must go for knowledge the bible says to buy the truth and sell it not that means the truth is not cheap it will cost you except that money is the least of the currencies you will need to buy the truth the first currency to buy the truth is hunger and desire. You use honor to buy the truth. You use your attention and your focus to buy the truth. You use meekness and humility to buy the truth. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. Hallelujah. Ignorance is not a demon. You don't cast it out. Ignorance is a state of mind. You solve that problem by introducing superior ideas to your mind. Let me challenge someone. Write the list of the areas that are not working in your life and make it a project after this conference to begin to pursue the requisite level of knowledge it takes to erode ignorance from your life. Are we together? Light. So number one, your spiritual connection number two vision number three light can we talk about the fourth all right so let's walk very quickly number four what is the fourth principle that governs acceleration excelling in life a transformed mind please write it down the power of transformation sustaining superior beliefs Knowledge is useless, except it is used as a tool that transforms you. A transformed mind. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. The Bible says, for as he thinketh in his heart, interchange for mind, the Bible did not say so he will become. It says so so is he you already are you are a summation of your beliefs this is a profound statement listen success is not what you pursue if you find yourself trying to pursue success you have failed from the beginning success is what you attract by who you are becoming more than what you are doing your becoming is the greater reason for attracting success most people are concerned about doing so a man for instance wants to sort out his finances and the first thing he does is what business idea no you've already failed you don't make money of business you make money of your understanding your business only is a vehicle that gives your understanding expression to live a rewarded life so you can do what other people are, are doing but your understanding will cripple that vehicle and make it of non effect as far as your prosperity is concerned. Transformation. What is transformation? The name given to the process that makes you become, makes you like Jesus Christ in experience. But number two, transformation means the process of replacing the old, mundane, and mediocre ideas about God, about Satan, about success, about failure, about life. What do you know about God? What do you know about destiny? What do you know about Satan? What do you know about defeat? What do you know about organization? Transformation. Transformation. 
sustaining superior beliefs this is where the concept of mindsets and strongholds come into play a mindset is a sustained way of thinking positively or negatively it is a sustained way of thinking and the bible lets us know and even psychologists and philosophers agree on this one thing that your life will become an expression of the quality of your thoughts or otherwise this is true for various reasons we have sustained all kinds of thinkings chiefest among them being our backgrounds failures of the past our environment are we together now all of these agencies have imparted into us mindsets and beliefs that many times and in many ways can be limiting and destructive this is one of the assignments of the church that when you come to church through the lens of scripture an editing a process of editing begins to happen to your mind so you begin to learn the ways of God. Philippians 2 and verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Jesus, Christ Jesus. Don't just desire his results. You must have his mindset. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. This is very profound. Mindsets. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Finally, brethren, Paul says, Philippians 4 and verse 8, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if, the, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise. Help me complete that scripture. Think on these things. He defines to you the jurisdiction for your thoughts. That if you want to live an excelling life, you must sustain the ability to limit the sources of your information. Because as a man thinketh in his heart or his mind, he becomes. Do you know what a stronghold is? Let me define for you in this teaching what a stronghold is. A stronghold is a sustained faulty thinking pattern that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits so that it keeps the victim perpetually thinking in that pathway. It is that state that can make the word of God of non-effect. Are we together? Then open he their eyes. Open he their minds, their understanding. You notice that every time Jesus found blind people in the Bible, he took their issues seriously. Because the issue of light and the issue of transformation is very serious. So Jesus is giving his final words, admonishing the disciples, preparing for his moment of transition. And this is what he told them. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Please look at me. Every time we think of that scripture, we only think of it in terms of signs and wonders. But it says these signs. That means your believing is a dangerous thing because there are physical signs that must follow you. Everything following you is a report card. It's telling you that there is something you believe that is attracting what is following you. If failure is following you, pain is following you, you don't drive it by saying go away. They are respecting your belief. They were sent to come to honor your belief these signs the signs of pain the signs of rejection the bible says this sign shall follow them that believe so when you want to change the signs that are following you you change your believing you change your believing you change your believing and as you know the key to transformation is number one the discovery of the truth and then number two, using the law of repetition to bury that truth and that superior information until it is embedded within your subconscious mind. You know this. You have been taught this. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Do not downplay this. Every time you have a physical result that is greater than your level of transformation, 
the law of God's justice will kick in and whatever you are holding must live your life. What appears in your physical world must be consistent with your level of transformation. If at any point, even through a gift or by a gift, you are ever given something that is higher than your level of transformation. Events will happen in your life that you call coincidences that will bring you to a state where everything higher than your mindset will deplete until it leaves you. So you give somebody one billion naira and in his mind, the highest financial realm is 100,000. Through a series of events that even the victim cannot explain, that money will reduce until it comes to that range. Then it will stop. This is the reason why no corporation promotes people arbitrarily without training. They upgrade their minds to match the level of increase that they want to bring to them. This is the fallacy of living a fake life. Living a fake life means that you attempt to pull together physical things in your life that are inconsistent with your transformation. You are only recycling pain again and again and again. Is someone learning now? Yes. Apostle, I'm trusting God for a global ministry. I'm trusting God for a global organization. If your mindset does not receive that, everything in life is built twice. I wish we had time. I would have taken you to Genesis 11 and I would have shown you something very profound. Nimrod Kush called the people together to build a city and a tower whose top will reach the heaven. He motivated them and began to sell that idea to them. And the Bible says they believed. While all of that process of transformation was happening, the Bible says God looked from heaven and saw that the building has been finished. It had not started. It's in your Bible. Give us Genesis 11 and verse 5. Don't tempt me. The Bible says we should resist temptation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Genesis 11 and verse 5. Watch this. The Bible says, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. It has been finished in the spirit. Before they lay one block on the ground, their minds had built it already. And listen, I hope you know in this scripture, Satan was not mentioned. The Holy Spirit was not mentioned. It was just imagination and the power of it. Verse 6. Verse 6. Give us that scripture. This is God testifying about men who were not saved. These men did not have the Holy Ghost assisting them. The Lord said, Behold, the people is one and they all have one language. And he said, This they begin to do. It was finished in their mind. They want to now begin to execute it. And God said, because it was finished, nothing, God himself is saying, nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined. Not are imagining. They were about to do it, but as far as the mind realm is concerned, it was finished. Everything in life is built twice. The most superior building is the one in your mind. Destroy any physical thing. That is why a prosperous man who loses in business, while you are trying to greet him as though you are coming to mourn with someone who lost a loved one, he's laughing at you and encouraging you because it was only the physical money that disappeared. Everything that is built in your mind, provided it is intact, laugh at anything that tries to take it from your life. It is, it's like pulling a rubber ring. It will always return back. Do you believe what you are hearing? So someone can rejoice in your lowly estate. Nothing physical yet appearing. Yet you rejoice because by the teaching of the word, coming to church every week is transferring wealth to you. If I ask you how do people become wealthy and you tell me they do business, you are not a good student. No. We become blessed and by wealthy I don't just mean financially you understand what I mean yes the level of excellence and dexterity in your life is is it comes from the superiority of your ideas your degree of transformation so key number one again your spirituality your connection is someone learning already now you see that victory and advancement is not just an impartation it is predictable these are the keys. They are irrefutable. They will not fail. 
Two, vision. Three, light. Sufficient light. Four, transformation. Let me give you the fifth for this service and then we'll end. Please do not miss tonight. Number five. Hmm. Are you ready? The fifth key that controls advancement is productivity. Productivity. Value and productivity. You may want to write. Value and productivity. Let me show you a scripture that inspired me years ago and certain covenant decisions came out of that scripture. Mark chapter 1 from verse 35 to 37. Value and productivity. I'll read 35, 36. When I get to 37, we'll read together. Let me read now. And in the morning, rising up a great while, he went out. The he being Jesus now. He was done with his crusades. And the Bible says in the morning, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Verse 36. The Bible says, and Simon and they that were with him followed after him. Verse 37, may that be your story. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. How many men? All men means all categories of people. Businessmen, politicians. There is a kind of value when you carry, only your tribesmen look for you. There is a kind of value when you carry only those within your age range look for you there is a kind of value when you carry only those within your nation look for you but there are certain levels of value and productivity when you carry all men all men that includes businessmen all men that includes diplomats all men all men look at the life of jesus businessmen came to him children came to him in fact ignorant people came to him the bible talks about the men of david that they came and met david in the cave of adulam these were men who were in debt they were men who were distressed and the bible says david turned them to become mighty men they were so mighty one time he said oh that i would drink of the pool of bethlehem and those men they went and defeated armies and brought down people skill mastery excellence they fetched the water and brought and he said no you've shed too much blood i can't take this one of them the men was so mighty the Bible said he stood at one point holding the sword he defeated 800 people and the sword would not leave his hands say mastery today's world is a world that does not tolerate mediocrity by any standard whatsoever value and productivity as a preacher you are not excelling just because you are preaching the gospel. No. From a spiritual standpoint, yes. But you excel in ministry to the degree to which you are communicating value. Even though spiritual in context, it is life applicable. Number one, you are connecting men to faith. Number three, you are introducing superior word-based ideas that transform their minds. Ideas that they can translate into results in their daily life. Value. The gift of a man makes room. Watch this. Do you know what it means to make? To make means until it is made, there was no space. Most people just imagine there's a space for me somewhere. There's no space for you. You create it by your value. The table of greatness is always filled. It is your value that brings your own chair and shifts people and qualifies you to sit there. Hallelujah. We're not called to do everything, but in that one thing that can give you an edge in life, you must obtain grace from God and set you to do it exceptionally well. The Bible talks about a young man in Genesis chapter 40 and chapter 41 called Joseph. Joseph had the grace to interpret dreams and with it to prefer very superior solutions. And so he had been in the prison for a number of years plus two years added as a result of the carelessness of the wine presser. Are we together? When it was time for God to elevate, to accelerate and to lift him, 
God decided to create a problem and shut the heavens over the diviners because kings in those days had men, mediums who communicated with the realm of the spirit. This time around, the heavens were shut over them. And the Bible says, the wine presser said, I remember my wrong this day. And the king sent for Joseph. They brought him out of his dungeon. And the king narrated the dream. And with the mastery of a professional, he laughed. He said, king, save yourself the stress. I know the interpretation. He said, God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And he begins to give him that, that, that interpretation. And now the solution. He said, let Pharaoh look for a man who is so discreet and wise. It was a diplomatic way of saying, I dare you, find it. If you will find a man that discreet and wise. You know, you are just coming out of the prison. You have to talk well. So you don't go back there. So he said, let Pharaoh find a man. When he had been searching for men before the arrival of Joseph. Apostle, they don't like me just because of my tribe. I agree, I sympathize with you. But that's not the reason. There is a level of mastery that vetoes gender issues, vetoes all kinds of sentiments. Believe me when I tell you. I was listening to the testimony of the lady who, who shared before I, I, I came up, how that her corporation was almost pleading with her, giving her three months. Now, in this same Nigeria, are we together? Listen, you can use competence, value, productivity to define your possibilities. Now, listen, please. The door of greatness, one day the Lord taught me this. The realm of greatness has two doors. There are two entrances to the realm of greatness. Number one is the door of value. Number two is the door of need. When you enter the door of greatness through the realm of need, you become a slave there. Because it was your need that brought you there. You are at the mercy of anything and anyone there. But when you enter the realm of greatness through the door of value, even the great will acknowledge you as a colleague. So many of you want to be great. Make every man's need is his point of contact. If you come to me begging or you come to me contributing to my life, I will most likely pay attention to the one who is contributing to my overall well-being. Am I right on that? This is a very powerful secret. There are people who when you see their text, you know they're about to beg. Calvary greetings. It's not about the greeting at all. This is after one year, one year old text messages. The rent has expired. I'm not being sarcastic just for your knowledge. Calvary greetings. How are you today? I hope you are doing well. Your children fine. You say, just send the other text. The real text that should come. That is the door of need. Many of you have been trying to access great men through the door of need. I'm still here. Everybody has a need. His need is his point of contact. Are we learning? Value and productivity. When it has to do with being valuable, you must obtain grace and discipline. Fine tune what you know. Now, in business, like you know, this is a morning session, so I'm at liberty. There is what we call the law of compensation. And the law of compensation in business states that our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to three things. Number one, the need for what we do. Number two, our ability, skill, proficiency in doing what we do. Number three, the difficulty in replacing us. That means the rewards that come to you in life, first being financial and then every other kind of reward, it comes to you in response to these three things. Number one, the need or demand for what you do. Number two, your ability to do what you do. And number three, the difficulty in replacing you. It is true that no man is indispensable, but make yourself so hard to find another you. Don't be so easily replaceable. Don't become a final option when other options have been exhausted and then it looks like they can't find them and say, okay, since you are here, can you help us? You can transit to a rebel. Listen, until you serve kings, don't stop growing. Don't say, I am serving people. 
If you do not serve kings, you are not yet rising. Apostle, I am a fashion designer. Who are you dressing? You cannot receive the reward of the palace if you are serving outside the palace. And the king sent, the Bible talks about many people who when they were building the temple, there were many people that were brought because of their cunning skills. I made up my mind as a covenant, as a man of God, and one who desires a great destiny, that I will never go anywhere in my life where people just say, thank you, well done, and you have a nice day, and I'm not sure that you are needed again. No. And I knew the key was not just to pray alone, to buy the truth, be a student of knowledge. Take away ignorance together with the embarrassment it brings from your life. Drive two of them away. Value, productivity. Man of God, if you are not on the pulpit, can you speak to businessmen? Can you speak to diplomats? Have you walked upon yourself? Don't bring tribal or emotional sentiments. Are you so competent that patronizing you does not become a risk? Can I recommend you and sleep without feeling guilty that I did evil to the person I recommended you to? I have 10 more minutes. Let's do number six. Thank you, Jesus. Is someone changing? You see that the you that came to church is not the you living. You will look for the you that came and not find it again. In the name of Jesus Christ. And you see, ignorant people will look at your results tomorrow and say, you are so lucky. So you sit them down and say, I am what I am by the grace of God. But this grace was not showered on me in that I labored more than you all. It is the, the ignorance that plagues our world. Every time we see great people, we say they were fortunate. Really? No. There are certain results that do not happen by luck. He that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives and accepts his strives lawfully. Let's do number six so we end for this morning. Are you ready for number six? The sixth principle that governs the enviable rising of men is called the power of relationships. Pastor spoke about that yesterday. The power of relationships. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 4. Please let's hurry up 1 to 4. So God blesses Abraham and speaks, proposes a blessing to him. Let's just jump to verse 3. Verse 2 now says, 3 says, In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 4 now. He says, So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. I like the next expression. And Lot went with him. God never called Lot. Lot heard that God was walking with Abraham and he said, I'm going with you. And Lot went with him. When you go to chapter 13 for sake of time from verse 1 to 5, you will now discover that everything Abraham had, Lot had too. You would not even know who God called and who followed. <laughs> to the point that there were contentions. But watch this. There is a powerful lesson there. The one who followed made a foolish mistake. He forgot that the anointing was not on him. It was the benefit of relationships. He would have managed that quarrel wisely. The first decision Lot will make outside of the influence of Abraham ended him in Sodom and Gomorrah. He lost everything and he depleted to become like his former self. It took the same Abraham to negotiate his, his preservation with God. There are relationships you must swallow your pride and never fight. Listen, there are three kinds of relationships generally. Number one, they're 
our general relationships, we call it. The Bible mandates that we are good to all men. You meet people on the street, you meet people everywhere, greet them, be good to all men, honor all men, then honor the king. Number two, there are seasonal relationships. These relationships are in your life for a moment and for a season. And the key to maximizing them is to discern the value they bring fast so that you are able to receive it the moment the season for that relationship is done it will no longer bless you and you must have the courage to transit when the season is if the season comes to an end the third is covenant relationships these are destiny relationships that the success of your entire life depends on them an example is your relationship with god covenant relationships these are the kinds of relationships that you need to swallow your pride and for no reason should you cut away from certain people because they have an investment in your destiny that they must make are we together now let me show you one more scripture in matthew chapter 4 from verse 18 and 19 matthew 4 18 and 19 the bible says and Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren. Until they met Jesus, they were only called brethren. Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Let's read verse 19 together. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you. Stop there, please. Follow me, and I will make you. That means whoever you are following, has an influence on you follow me just follow me and i will make you follow me and i will make you a responsible leader follow me and you will turn into an armed robber respectfully speaking for someone there are good people whose destruction started when they started following certain people am i right on that follow me and i will make you follow me and i will make you follow me and i will lift you follow me and you will go down there were two boat incidences in the bible the first had a prophet who was running away from god called jonah and because of his presence in that boat people lost their lives they had gone to do business they they almost lost their lives they lost everything they had they literally threw away all their investments to preserve their life and the man who was causing the trouble was sleeping is it not in your bible Later on, they woke him and said, are you okay? What is, look at this. They, they casted lots and it fell on him and he said, it's true. I'm the reason for this. They said, what do we do now? He said, you have to throw me out of this boat. You thought the people would say, ah, that's too harsh. They threw him out in a moment because they had lost their, they had lost too many things. They said, so you are the one here? Go out so that we can have peace. And they threw him truly. God rescued him later. But as far as their salvation was concerned, he needed to be out of that boat. Versus another story where men were in a boat and there was a storm. And another man called Jesus was sleeping. And this time around, keeping him there and waking him was the key to their salvation. Two men in a boat. One was the reason for failure and depletion. Another was the reason for preservation. Beware who you are carrying in the boat of your destiny. Beware. Hallelujah. Everything in life advances on the basis of relationships. Everything. Everything in life. Plants, animals, they multiply and they advance on the basis of relationship. Without relationship, there is no multiplication. And there is no advancement microbiology teaches us at a cellular level that the way that cells multiply to become an organism it happens by breaking multiplication repeatedly again and again until it becomes a full organism everything in life multiplies on the basis of relationships I'm not going to teach it but let me talk to you about destiny helpers you may have heard me teach it. It's a revelation that changed my life. I will list four kinds of people that you must cry and pray, even this morning, that God brings to your life. Hallelujah. Destiny helpers are men and women ordained, commissioned, 
and sent by God to assist you in actualizing destiny. They are not men who freelance your life. They are ordained, they are commissioned, they are sent by God into your life to assist you in your advancement and your destiny adventure. Hallelujah. This is very important. When the prophet came to the woman in Zarephath, the Bible says that God commanded him to go there. But when he went there, the woman was meeting him as a stranger. It didn't sound like there was any preparation there, but it was the reason for her, for her preservation. These four groups of people, the Lord showed me by revelation, and it has changed my life. Can I run through the list as we wrap up? Number one, divine connectors. This is the first category of destiny helpers you must cry for. Who are divine connectors? They do not have the solution you are looking for, but they know somebody who knows somebody who can connect you. They are called divine connectors. An example was the slave girl in the house of Naaman. She could not heal Naaman, but she could take him to a prophet who could heal her. Had he ignored that slave girl, he would die leprous forever. An example of divine, of divine connectors, the men who carried the crippled man and brought to the crusade of Jesus, they tore the roof and brought that man. They were determined that he would be healed. Do you know the problem of the man in Bethesda was not his weakness. When Jesus asked him, what is your condition here? He said, I have no man. I have no man. I am not the angel that steers the water, but I can help you. Everybody who was healed there was healed therefore because there was a man to assist them there. Divine connectors. The key to receiving from divine connectors is honor and discernment because they will always come in a form that is not desirable. For instance, your house help, like the precious woman who gave that story. Divine connectors. If you only respect people of pedigree and class, get ready to learn a bitter lesson in life. A conductor who is driving a car can hand over an invitation to you and that invitation will be where that medical condition will come to an end. The key is to discern. Number two, men of influence. The second category of destiny helpers you must cry for to come into your life are called men on, of influence. These men have the track record and they have the credibility. They have the ears of systems and structures. Their endorsements can become a leverage to your life in a moment. Divine connectors are wonderful, but they are not enough for destiny, for destiny actualization. You need men and women of influence. And I'm praying that God will bring those kinds of people to your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. One signature in Lagos, help him. The man will not write his name. He will write his signature. The person you are to take it to knows what he's seeing there. Help him. Kindly assist. It can be in a paper you find on the ground. Kindly assist. And he, the man is about to throw you out and says, where did you get this? What you are holding is not a paper. What you are holding is history of transforming the man who is holding that paper. How do I throw this man out now? Okay, you come in. Let me tell you the truth. If God says yes and men say no, your yes will remain in the spirit. For that yes to be made manifest, it is both the spirit and the bride that must say come. If God says be healed and there is no man to echo that healing, you will not be healed. The spirit and the bride. God in partnership with men. Number three, gifted men. The third category of destiny helpers that you need are gifted men. Sometimes you just need men of skill and excellence. The assignment of these people is to produce efficiency in your life global corporations all across the globe they excel today because they have mastered the art of bringing together skillful people when no matter how well intentioned people are if they are not skillful you will not produce results if they are not skillful there will be a lot of waste in your life and your organization are we together you mitigate waste by bringing together skillful people divine connectors Men of influence, 
skillful people and the last of the destiny helpers that you need in your life are called burden bearers these men are very unique people they cannot move you forward but their assignment is to stop you from going backward they are men who love you for you not for your office not for your status when all is said and done because you see I hate to be the bearer of bad news but I will tell you according to the law of seasons and the law of time and chance everybody will find yourself carrying a cross one day the way to the throne is the cross even Jesus the miracle walking Jesus got to a point where he was on his way to Golgotha drained because he had bled so much the Bible says he fell. If Jesus died on the ground, we would not be saved. He needed to die as a curse on a tree. A burden bearer called Simon of Cyrene was now fetched and he came and helped him carry the cross to Golgotha. Even salvation needed the ministry of burden bearers. Can I tell you, woe betides a man that when you are in your down times in life, there is nobody. Divine connectors cannot help you in the day of adversity. Men of influence may not do you much. Gifted men may not help you, but a burden bearer will cry with you. A burden bearer, out of all the people Jesus raised and lifted, there were only two who were with him at the cross, his mother and John. Including Peter who said, I will not go anywhere. He ran in a moment. He later repented, I agree, but as far as the cross is concerned, he was not there. Can I tell you, if you ever believe you are a celebrity, you are, you, are, you are right, but I want you to think well. Out of the many people clapping for you, I hope you have been able to find burden bearers. Because a day will come, those who are saying become king will say crucify him. They ate your bread at the crusade, but they will still say crucify him. They will even go further to say let his blood be on our children. That is the, the interesting thing about the law of seasons. There will always be seven years of fatness and seven lean years. He said, this dream you have had twice, it is established. It cannot fail. There is always rainy season. You may have heard me say it, as we call it here, rainy, rainy season always comes with a letter from dry season, I am coming. And dry season always comes with a letter from rainy season. I am also coming. It does not matter what season you are in. Every season comes with a letter from the season to come. If you are enjoying seven years of abundance, do what Joseph recommended because there will be seven seasons of famine. And even if you are Samaria going through a season of famine, make sure you read the letter that comes from that season that it will not last forever. There is nothing new under the sun. Have you been blessed this morning? Rise up on your feet. Hallelujah. Apologies for stretching your time. Just two prayer points and we're done this morning. Lift your hands to heaven and thank him for what you have heard. The Bible says, blessed are your ears for they hear. Blessed are your eyes for they see. Thank you, Jesus. Someone is praying. Thank him for this that you have heard. It says, now that you know this, happy are you if you do them six keys you were given this morning number one your spiritual connection number two that you were given is your um after your spiritual connection what's the second yes what's the third light what's the fourth huh you've forgotten already what's number five value and productivity was the sixth can i tell you hold these keys with confidence you will get to a door you search you will find the key you will open it you will go to a door you search you will open it you go to a door you search you open it i guarantee you you hold these keys you will tame life like an animal the same way men tame dogs and use them for their advantage hallelujah now i want to make a request and that at the permission of your pastor that if you will allow i want to please request that you come with a prayer request if that is fine 
to come with a prayer request usually i wrap up my sessions when i have an opportunity to minister to people like this is a grace that he's given so that we can agree together as a family of faith that god will bring miracles for people sir will that be fine okay so as you come tonight it's going to be an extraordinary moment please invite everybody i hope that will have the chance to pray for the sick speak over your life and then we'll pray over this request that any egyptian that you see today that you will see them no more forever may the lord bless you the lord increase you in jesus name Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell, keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you.